Hey guys, I just wanted to make a super quick video to show you what I was working on today and how you could do something like this if you wanted to do it. First, let's demo the product. So basically what this does is it makes an enemy appear on a map, or at least you... You feel that the enemy is randomly appearing. So now you can see he's up there walking around, that little goblin, right? And if you run into him, it'll cause an encounter. I'm not going to run into him yet, but let me just show you. And then when you leave the map and come back, he'll spawn in a different place. There he is behind the cloud over there, that tricky little goblin. So we come over here and we see he's walking around. And if I walk into him, he'll fight me. Blah, 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 blah. Story happens. If you want to know how it works, you got to buy my game. Of course, I can't survive the fight that long, so it's somewhat irrelevant. That's basically how it works. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I accomplished something like that. Don't forget to sub. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so basically this functionality is built off of two events and it also requires you to have a specific item. This is the event that becomes the goblin. I have another event that changes the image here to be the goblin's image, right? But if you don't have some conditions, which is to have this stuff called spicy jerky, I do this as a separate event because I want to allow it to have a random movement here. You see this guy right here? And I also want it to be triggered on player touch. That's why I have a separate event that moves and positions this event. So let's look at that separate event I just mentioned. Basically, if none of the conditions are met, this event just erases itself. Here, uh, we start off this event with a condition that says that this event, which basically, if Glenn's Hill door is on, that means that that no matter what, the goblin will not spawn. So if that switch is on, then you can erase this event. But if it's not on, here's where the magic starts. Okay, so control switches, don't worry about that. That is a switch that turns an on and off my mobile controllers, as is this plug-in command. So both of these both work uh, to turn off my on-screen controls for mobile. On my desktop version, those just don't do anything. They're just benign, but I just leave them in just for the mobile version. This is important. As all this other stuff is going on down here, I set the movement route to wait for 400 frames. And what this does is it makes it so you cannot control your character for 400 frames. And since this is a parallel event that I'm using, I want the character to not be able to move until everything on this event is done. If it was an auto run event, it would stop the player from moving. However, you cannot run multiple auto run events at the same time. They will queue and query among each other. If you want stuff to run right off the bat, you got to use parallels. And uh, parallels could be a long discussion, but they're fine in this event because it's a very specific use and it's one time. Don't use too many parallels at once though. That's my general advice. Back on track here. Let's get back on track. First thing I do is I stop the player from being able to move and that's 400 frames. So that's roughly about five seconds. It turns this event to have zero opacity. So it makes it so it's basically invisible, right? Uh, which opacity is significant in this context because I'm not using transparency. And the reason is because I want the character to be able to fade in. So I'm going to use opacity and kind of animate it to increase over time. That's not really something that works out of the box with transparency. This plugin command is just a command I use to move the camera over the player. This is through uh, Galv's camera plugin. You could use movement to get the same effect, like a scroll camera in your events. You know, something like, uh, where is it? Scroll map, that's it. Scroll map. So on page two in the top left, you can use scroll map if you want to reposition the camera to be closer to the goblin if you don't want to use Galv's camera plugin. So this would be the alternative way. You also technically could use a transfer map, but you got to be a little bit more careful with the transfer map, at least initially, uh, because it can sometimes reset the map, like reload the map, in which case the goblin will be in a different place. So there are ways to do that, but uh, scroll map uh, definitely 
is 100% guaranteed that'll work. And if you want to use Galv's plugin, I'll leave a link to that in the uh, description. Okay, so first thing it's checking for here is if the Game Plus is activated is on, uh, then you have, this is the Game Plus version of the Goblin. He's red, right? He's a red Goblin. And this is the regular game version. He's your typical everyday green goblin. Okay, so that's just something that changes based on whether it's game plus or not. <clears throat> now, I have this variable, it's called X fight. I actually use it for one of my combat skills. However, it doesn't really matter if I use it on the map. So I'm just gonna use it anyway, since if I reset it later, it doesn't affect this. But you may wanna make a dedicated variable to your randomization, it's up to you, but it can be zero to nine. So 10 possible choices there, zero is, one, right? Zero counts as one, so that's 10 possible choices. Now for every one of those possible choices, I put in a conditional or an if statement, if you will, and they all will move the character to a specific place. Now let's just look at this plugin command real quick. Game map dot event 49. So this is saying we're gonna move event 49 here. We're gonna relocate it to 33 by 100. Now this is the X position here and the Y position 100. So this is the, a very important script call to kind of get this faux random spawn point thing going. Now, as you can clearly see, it's not a random spawn point. It's a one out of 10 potential or zero out of nine, however you want to look at it. There's basically 10 potential places where the enemy can spawn. And it just puts him in one of those 10 places, depending on what variable is picked. Some people, if they play the game enough, they will be like, oh, okay, well, he's gonna spawn in one of these 10 places. It's full randomization. It's kind of random, it's kind of rogue. Not really, I don't know, that's a whole debate for a different video. But basically, if you wanna get this effect in like a very controlled space, this is a good way to do it. So basically, these are the 10 possible places he can go. And uh, let's just look at the map. Right? It's basically like here, 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 or here. Uh, something like that. The character can spawn anywhere throughout the map. And after that happens, we have this kind of spinning animation, which is nothing too fancy. It's just a movement routes. I make sure to put this on wait for completion because you don't want the other events. Uh, the other uh, stuff in this event to fire before this is done. Some of the stuff that sticks out here is I did use a script call. Uh, game screen dot start fade out 22 basically fade out the screen over 22 frames and the reason why I did this here is so that I could keep it in the movement route you could technically do it outside of the movement route however I prefer to do it inside of the movement route so the character doesn't start moving around before uh, the thing's over because if you do have a character on random movement he will move if you use a weight outside of a movement route so this way I can start the fade happening and keep the character from moving around so he's not like randomly moving so that's just a preference you could probably go either way but anyway basically this just plays like some sounds and you can see the opacity is increasing over time here and then it's increasing by increments of frames and the frames get further apart which basically he's kind of spins coming in and then he slows down and then he finally does like a little hop at the end. This plug-in command just moves the camera back to the player. Remember, while that's happening, the screen is faded out. So it feels like the screen fades out and it reappears over the player. But if that fade wasn't actually there, at least with my plugin, you would see an actual like really quick like fly over to the map. But I'm just kind of hiding that. It's a little bit of a hacky way to do it, but that's, that's my MO, I guess. And then this cam disable is just uh, something I do for my world map since it's using that mode 7 tech uh, This camera plugin doesn't really play well with that tech it, it kind of jitters So I just disable this smooth kind of camera smoothifying effect when I'm using mode 7 And then here I just turn back well first I fade in the screen and I turn back on the 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 mobile buttons this is the joystick and well this is the joystick and this is the pressable buttons for mobile and again on windows it'll just like do this but it won't just ignore it so it won't it'll just be benign okay so let's just kind of go through it again and i can show you exactly what's going on one more time and then we'll close the video fast one right fast video so you have to have this spicy jerky in order to get the goblin to show. In fact, let me show you what happens if you don't have the spicy jerky. It just does this little cutscene. This is the, a cutscene it does every time you first enter the map, so don't worry about that. 
but it so you can see clearly no goblin appears right no matter what you do if you have the spicy jerky in your inventory however the goblin will show up and do his little hop and then you can walk over to him and fight him you can also this will spawn from regardless of where you are so you can see I'm over here, he spawns, and he'll spawn in one of these 10 places every single time. And regardless of where I come out of, he'll still spawn and then the camera will come back to me. So if I'm over here, works great. Or over here in the distance on a totally different island, right? It works fine. See, it put me right back here. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something with me going through all that stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like it, you know, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, do you think this is the right way to do something like this, or do you think this is a dumb way? I'm okay. I'm open. To, I'm confident. You can tell me whatever you think, and I will appreciate it. So I'll talk to you all later.